Good to see you all tonight, and we want to give you a real welcome along to our teaching Tuesday here in the Welcome Church. Um, there's somebody coming in, David. Yep. Um, and again, we just want to welcome the folks that are watching online as well. Lovely to have you just clicking in, tuning in. It is a real wet night tonight here in Belfast, and we appreciate the folks that have made the effort to come out tonight. And um, and we trust that you'll be blessed. The folks that are watching who couldn't be here, um, we pray that you'll be blessed. And we trust that everyone that is here will be encouraged through the word. And so we're going to change positions. We're going to stand together and we're going to sing our opening song. It's called These Are the Days of Elijah. So let's stand together and let's sing unto the Lord. Johnny. 
Amen. Praise God. Good to be here tonight in God's house. And again, we want to welcome you all for coming. And it's lovely to have friends with us tonight from Iran. They were here on Sunday. Great to see you back again. Say hello to them. Get to know them. Make them feel welcome. God bless you. We're becoming a very multinational church around here. Folks from India, from Iran, I'm telling you, we're getting global. And uh, I know some of the folks are watching online as well tonight from around the world. And we're very thankful um, for you that are part of our church here and what we stand for. And so we're just going to come before the Lord in prayer. Going to pray for God's blessing. Thinking about Sadie tonight, who's still missing. We're praying for God to help her and touch her and strengthen her at this time. Thinking of George Hines tonight. Thinking of others that normally would be here but can't be here because of sickness, purposes, reasons. Thinking of families going through bereavement. Um, we were speaking today um, the, at the Staros meeting that we hosted it here today. And um, I was inv- and asked to speak at it. And while we were speaking, uh, as David knows, a um, family came to the door looking at us. And we're thinking of the Linton family circle tonight. Don Linton has just lost his wife. And we're just praying for him and for the family circle that God will comfort them. And other families that are in the similar situation at this time going through bereavement. I also um, received a text message today. Um, the folks, some folks here tonight might remember Noel McCormick, who used to be a trustee here in the church. His granddaughter uh, passed away very suddenly today. And we're just thinking of the family circle that God will comfort them uh, at this time. And so I'm going to ask you if you would just bow with us. We're just going to pray and remember these dear families that God will just comfort them at this time. Let's just pray. Lord, we do thank you for the words that we have just been singing, that there is no God like Jehovah. Lord, we thank you that we can come before you, a living God. Thank you for the health and strength that you've afforded us to be here and to just enjoy your presence. And I just pray, Lord, that as we sing, as we worship you, as we talk to you now, and as we open up our our ears, our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, just to receive the engrafted weight of your word. We do pray that you'll speak. I pray for the folks that are watching online tonight. I pray for the folks that are here in church, that you'll speak through your word. I pray for the folks that are here. I pray for the folks that are watching online. If there is a need, if there's a concern going on in their lives, Lord, that you would just Meet them at the point of need because there is no God like Jehovah. And our confidence is in you, not in ourselves. It's very much in you. And I just pray, Lord, tonight that you would remember Sadie, who would be here normally. Lord, would you minister healing to her? And would you do the same with George Hines? Would you bless him? I thank you for these two servants. Lord, even the input that they have here on a Tuesday night just lifting their voice to you in prayer, praying for others. Lord, would you encourage them as we pray for them. For all, for all that are sick and needy, remember them. For families going through bereavement, Lord, we pray for the Linton family circle. And we ask, Lord, that you'll comfort them at this time. For other families in a similar situation, Lord, I think of that wee family across the street from me. I think of the Floyd family. I think of Ken and Ivy tonight. They may be watching online. Pray for them as neighbors as Ken prepares to bury his mother on Thursday. And I ask, Lord, that you'll comfort at this time also. Lord, remember all of the various ministries here. And even as we step out of a new month tonight and into an old month tonight and a new one tomorrow, Lord, help us during the month of December every day. Remind us, Lord, the reason for the season, the birth of our Savior coming into this world. So, Lord, do us good. Bless us, we pray. And, Lord, we do know that the Savior who came into this world, as we will learn tonight, will one day be the judge there at the Bema seat, passing out the rewards, the work that's well done. And so, Lord, speak. Let us learn from your word. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. I just want to remind you of the announcements for the rest of the week. And so tomorrow, senior citizens, God bless you. Have a good time of fellowship tomorrow uh, as you just meet together. And then on Thursday morning here at 11 o'clock is the hour of prayer. And again, we um, just thank the Lord for the faithful band who come and pray for the work here. Um, and be good to see you. If you can make it on Thursday, 11 to 12, if you can only make it for a short time, that's okay. Just come and go uh, as your schedule allows you. Uh, but um, we can't survive without prayer. So that's on uh, Thursday morning. Friday night is our youth work here in, in the church. And again, we value the prayers um, from the God's people as we continue our ministry here among the young people. Uh, on Friday evening, same times. Uh, remember, folks, on Saturday we're having our Christmas fair here, and we would love to see you all coming. Spread it out, let people know, invite your friends, and let's have a really good day here on Saturday, 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock. It's a family time. There'll be Santa's Grotto, there'll be stalls. If you want to get a bargain for Christmas, just come along and <clears throat> let's support a real worthwhile charity this year. Uh, that we have chosen, Aiken Arms UK, who draw alongside families who have lost children and give them that support that they need. It's a worthy cause. Uh, and so that's what we're doing on Saturday, and you're more than welcome. There's no entrance fee. Just come on in and have a look around, pick up a bargain, pay for it, have a cup of tea, coffee. There's refreshments, everything. Listen, just have a really good time um, on Saturday and it's for all of the family. Uh, talk it up, let people know, and really give it your support. That brings us to the following day, the Lord's Day, 11.30, our morning service here, uh, which is Fellowship Sunday, and nobody needs to hurry away afterwards. You can stay behind, have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee, have some fellowship, well, for a short time, because we have another baby dedication at half one. This will be the last of the, the year 2021 and um, so we pray for God's blessing on our morning service and also the kids reach that are over across the way rehearsing for the nativity play that we're really looking forward to on the 19th of December uh, so pray for the kids pray for our preparation on Sunday morning we've just finished the series on tell me the stories of Jesus trust that you've enjoyed them and now we're just looking into the Christmas theme uh, and bringing messages that relate to the birth of our Saviour. And so bring our first one on Sunday morning uh, at 11.30. Uh, and like I say, stay behind for fellowship, baby dedication, half one. Then at half six, we have our Christianity explained or our life explored, which is the uh, the proper title for the second edition of what you're doing. Trust that you are enjoying it, that are coming out on a Sunday night. And we again just pray for God's blessing um, on uh, Sunday evening at 6.30. Just want to remind folks again as we have, tomorrow we enter into the month of December, that um, once we get through the month, the first service of the year in 2022, we plan to have a baptismal service that Sunday morning. And we open it up again for you that if you haven't went through or been through the waters of baptism, um, then would you please come and speak to us um, and let's baptize you in an immersion if God has spoken to you in such a way and you want to follow in the footsteps of our Savior who was baptized in the River Jordan, but John the Baptist. And as we look at the relevant passages through the New Testament, how that from Acts and the Romans right through we see how that baptism in the New Testament, it certainly wasn't optional. It was obligatory. It was the norm. And if we want to be a New Testament church, then let's follow in the footsteps of what we read about in the book of Acts. So come and talk to us if you haven't been through the waters of baptism. Um, and we look forward to baptizing you. I know we've already had a few candidates that are preparing to go through um, the first Sunday of the year. And we pray for God's blessing upon that. 
So I think that's all of our announcements out of the way. So we're going to turn to the Word of God. And so tonight we're taking a short reading. This is our 10th week study in prophecy. And we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to read just from verses 9 to verse 11. God's word says, Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or or absent, to be well-pleasing to him, to the Lord. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your consciences. And we'll just stop there and we'll pray that God will bless his word to our hearts tonight. And so just following on from where we left off last week, where we're trying to look at a calendar of events, a calendar of prophetic events, And following the glorious rapture of the church to heaven for believers, as we looked at it in our last study, and that glorious rapture where we will spend the next seven years. And there will come a time during that period, you may ask, well, what are we going to do for the seven years when we're there with the Lord? And what's happening down here, we'll we'll, we'll concern ourselves about up there first rather than what's going to happen down here. But there will come a time during that period, during that seven-year period, when all, as Paul wrote, we must all appear. There will come a time when all of the entire rapture church will gather together before the Lord at the Bema or the judgment seat of Christ, as our works in this life are judged and rewarded. Remember what I said last time, folks? That the the rapture of the church really ushers in the end of the church age that began way back in the book of Acts. And when the last convert is won and saved by God's grace, they are very much part of the body that will be raptured and brought to be with the Lord in heaven. That would be some story, wouldn't it? Could you imagine getting to heaven and finding out who the last convert was, who the Lord delayed is coming for, whoever that would be, man or woman, boy or girl, who knows? But this is what happens. We're raptured, and during that period, we will gather before the Lord at the Bema, or the judgment seat of Christ. I want you to have a look at it again in verse 10. Paul writing to the Corinthian believers says these words, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So we will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, what for? Each one receiving the things done in the body, according to what he's done, whether good or bad. So what is the Bema seat? There's a question. Well, let me tell you, in the ancient Roman culture, the Bema seat was actually an elevated platform, something like this, which is an elevated platform, only it's a lot higher, I suppose. It's an elevated platform where decisions would be handed down by rulers and where judges would sit on a seat 
and they would pass on judicially regarding disputes. And it was also a place where awards would be given out at the annual Greek athletic games. Back then, you know, you read through the New Testament and you see Paul must have been interested in athletics because he refers to it in various passages. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, you know, talking about running the race and stuff like that. Hebrews as well talks about it. And, you know, back then it would have been well known there was the annual Greek Olymp uh, athletic games, something like the Olympic Games. And it was a place where awards would be given out. Maybe where a garland would be put around you know, the head of a person. And for Christians, this is a place where the Lord Jesus will, will evaluate our lives in the giving out of eternal rewards. And that is supported by what Paul also wrote in Romans 14 verse 10, where he said, But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. There's the two references. Verse that we have read in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, Romans 14 verse 10. And so the question that we need to answer, every believer needs the answer, is this. Will I stand before the Lord at the Bema with a Beamer? Will I stand with a Beamer? Will I stand red-faced? Will I find myself blushing before him? My face red. Will you? Will I? Will the words of a song be a reality? Some of you may know the song, By and by when I look at his face, I wish I'd given him more. I wonder is that going to be the attitude of our hearts when we stand and look at his face? Wish I'd given him more. While here upon this earth, oh, was saved all right, but I wish I'd given him more time. I wish I'd made more of an effort regarding godly things. I wish I'd given more of myself. Found myself busy doing other things, but here I am looking at the face of Christ and all these earthly things have grown strangely dim in the light of his glorious face. If only I could turn my clock back, I wish I'd given him more. I wonder will that be the attitude, folks? when we stand there. And the thing is, it'll be too late to do anything about it, won't it? Be too late. And I don't want you to confuse this judgment seat of Christ with the great white throne judgment that we read about in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. Don't confuse this judgment seat with the great white throne judgment because there is going to be at least 1,007 years between these two judgments. And I say 1,007 years, and I think that's a rough estimate because after the seven-year tribulation is finished here upon earth, while we're in heaven, that will culminate in the battle of Armageddon. The end of those seven years ushers in the second coming where we will come back to the earth with the Lord. And that begins the thousand year reign. So, and it will be a thousand years of peace upon this earth. So if my mouths are right, that's a thousand and seven years of a difference between the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. And this great white throne judgment of Revelation 20 is a place where every unbeliever and Christ rejecter who has ever lived will stand before the Lord, sadly to receive the sentence of eternal death. 
But the Bema site, I repeat, is not that place. It's not the place where the salvation issue is addressed. You see, folks, there's no trap door up there during that period. There's no trap door that's going to drop you out of heaven if you're found lacking here upon this earth. You see, if you're saved by God's grace, your name is already written in heaven. It's already there. So we're safe and we're secure. And our salvation is safe and secure in Christ. So when we get there, if we haven't made an effort, there's no trap door that we're going to fall off. Oh, you haven't done enough. Bang, you're out. It's not that kind of a place, folks. Your name's already in heaven. You already have the certainty of eternal life. I have the certainty of of eternal life because the price has already been paid by our Savior on the cross at Calvary. So we should make no mistake about that. But folks, at the Bema seat, all Christians will give an account of how we have served the Lord while we're here on this earth. We will give an account. And surely why there's breath in our bodies. You know, the thought of standing at the judgment seat of Christ should really serve as a motivation for us to serve him acceptably. That when we come into his presence, he will say these words, well done, good and faithful servant. Surely that's what we want to hear, isn't it? I wonder, is that what he'll say? Or will he say, you've been a slothful servant? Or you've been a lazy servant? You've been a neglectful servant? Listen, will he look at us and say, yes, I remember when you were saved by God's grace. I remember when you responded. I remember when you came to faith, when you put your faith and trust in me. But after that, i never seen much of an effort spent in prayer. i never seen much of an effort spent in Bible reading. i never seen you really wanting to witness too much because remember the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro through the earth and he sees every one of us. i never seen much time, didn't see much of a burden for the unsaved. i never seen so much of an effort being made to try and reach other people. But I saw a big effort regarding climbing the social ladder of work and having a better house and doing this and doing that and doing the other things while you're here and you work yourself to the bone. But regarding me, didn't see much of an effort. No, (laughs) maybe you just can't say those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. I know he'll look at us and I know he'll love us. He loves us with an everlasting love. But I wonder, will the Lord be honest and say, you know, while you were here, you never really made much of an effort to get to know me in a personal way. I wonder. See, I'm provoking thought and you are looking at me here. I wonder with all of the time that he has afforded us here on this earth, will he say, well done. Or will he say, you've been lazy. Welcome. But you know what? You've been lazy. And you're here because you've responded one day to an altar call where you made a commitment. I want you to consider tonight all of the talents and the skills that God has blessed us with that's not being used because but we're just too busy doing other things. I wonder will the Lord be disappointed with us? You know, that's something to ponder, isn't it? Something to think about. Listen, don't worry, I'm not here with a sledgehammer. But it's something for us to think about tonight, honestly, folks. The time that we have, how it will be used. I'll tell you, when we stand before the Lord that day, at the judgment seat of Christ, there's three things that I noticed. Number one, this will be a time of revelation for the believer. It will be a time of revelation because all will be revealed, won't it? All will be revealed. You know, it's one thing find yourself sitting in a doctor's office and your name comes up on the light, you know, your name, surgery for, 
whatever, and you slip in, you knock the door, and the doctor comes in, and the, sorry, the doctor, come on in, and you go in and you sit, and you, you know, the doctor will how's the family, how's everybody, how's you, du, du, du. and you know, when everything's nice and cordial, it's one thing having that kind of a chat with a doctor. It's quite another thing when you're being x-rayed by that same person. And all is revealed on that chart. And you might not like it one bit. And I might not like it one bit. Maybe we didn't even want to hear about it or see it. But we can't ignore what the chart's x-rays says regarding our health or physicality. And the judgment seat of Christ, folks, just like the x-ray on the screen, it's going to reveal, it will reveal our lives of service. Not only just the quantity of it, but also the quality. The quality. Did you really put your heart and soul into whatever ministry you were involved in? Or did we find ourselves getting stretched into so many different things, we're pulled apart? Like a rag doll. Did we really put our heart and soul into what we were involved in? Was it all done for God's glory? How we served. You see, one day it's all going to be revealed and reviewed. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 12 to 15 Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed, there's that word again, by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which, we has, which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned, he'll suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Folks, you know as well as I do, there's a big difference in those categories. Gold, silver, precious stones. They're things that are worth searching for and holding on to. Wood, hay, straw. It's the kind of stuff you just throw on a bonfire on the 11th night. And it just helps to make the fire even better, doesn't it? It's worthless. But I don't think anyone here would fire gold on a, throw gold on a fire or a precious stone on a fire or, you know, silver, something that's worth something. You wouldn't do it. You would hold on to it. My folks, this passage doesn't teach the false doctrine of purgatory, by the way. Because it's the believer's works, not the believer himself, that will be revealed and tried by fire. It's the works that are tried by fire. And the true character of our work and our service will be exposed at that time before the eyes of the judge at the Bema seat. So when I look at this day, it's going to be a day of revelation. It's going to be a day of review. All will be revealed. But also it will be a day of reckoning for the saints. Because as we give an account of our Christian lives, how we have served in the ministries before the judge, on reflection, could we have done better and could we have been more committed? Were we faithful or were we half-hearted? How do we treat our fellow believers? And the Lord Jesus said these words in Matthew 10, verses 40 and verse 41. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. How many times is the word receives or receive mentioned in those few verses? I just wonder tonight, you know, how burdened, how burdened are we to win the lost? 
So it's going to be a time of reckoning. Oh, this judgment seat of Christ, it'll be a day of revelation. It'll be a day of reckoning or a time of reckoning. And thirdly, it's going to be a time of recognition and reward. So it's not all bad, folks. It's going to be a time of recognition and reward for the Christian. For those who have served faithfully, it will be a time of not standing there on the winner's rostrum, receiving garlands or gold medals, but it will be a time where you you will receive, and I will receive, God willing, a crown. A crown. We will wear a crown. The old song says, away over Jordan, we shall wear a crown. Do you know, folks, tonight, for the Bible student, that there's five crowns in the Bible? Do you know that? There's five. First of all, there is what's known as the imperishable crown. And it's given to those who have exercised self-control. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, Paul says, Do you not know that those who run in a race... Here's this man on his athletics head again. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we, for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run. Thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight. Not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest what I have preached to others, I should become disqualified. It's all about self-control, folks. This imperishable crown is for believers who have practiced self-control while we've walked upon this earth. That's the first one. Secondly, there's a soul winner's crown. For those that have faithfully witnessed for the Lord. Boy, I'd love one of those. 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 19 and 20. Paul writes, For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. That's how Paul viewed the church The church at Thessalonians was just made up of people like you and me that were born of the same spirit. Paul looks at this work that has been done through his preaching and he says, do you know what? You're our glory. You're our joy. You're our crown of rejoicing. The soul winner's crown. But great to get to heaven, wouldn't it? And be able to point and say, There's my crown of rejoicing. Remember witnessing to that person. Remember reaching out to that person. You know what? There are glory and there are joy. Just to see them there with us. And thirdly, there's the crown of righteousness. 2 Timothy 4 verse 8. Timothy is writing those words to, to Timothy. They tell me when he wrote these words that he was 63 years of age. He was a maximum security prisoner, ready to be sentenced to death by the emperor Nero. And he wrote that wonderful chapter to his son in the faith, Timothy. And he said to him in verses 4, chapter 4, verse 8, Finally, there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. There's a crown of righteousness, folks. And then there's the crown of life. That James 1 and verse 12 talks about, Blessed is the the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. That's the fourth crown. And finally, There's the crown of glory that's written about in 1 Peter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory. 
that doesn't fade away. Five crowns scattered through the New Testament that we read about. And you know, folks, surely whatever crowns we receive, I don't know about you, me, I wouldn't dare to keep it on my head. I would rather set them at the feet of the judge because the Lamb is all the glory in Emmanuel's Lamb. And he deserves all the praise and all the honor. It's not what we have done, it's what Christ has done. He was the one that paid the price. He was the one that made it possible. The babe of Bethlehem, born into this world, the word who became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. The Lamb of God, who came into this world to take away the sins of the world, who lived the sinless life, and who died an atoning death, and went through the pain and the agony of a cross, that you and I could be born of God, that one day you and I could spend eternity with him, having been buried in a tomb, risen from the grave, alive and ascended to heaven, where he's the great high priest at the right hand of the Father. One day he's coming for his people, the rapturous to heaven, and seven years later, he's going to bring his people with him back to this earth to usher in a thousand-year reign of peace upon this earth. And the devil bound during that period. It's not powerful. And listen, the lamb's all the glory in Emmanuel's land. Folks, after the reality of the rapture, this time will come during the period of time that we have talked about. And it's our responsibility as believers, as Christians, to examine our own lives. It's a good thing to examine yourself. As Paul says, you know, in fact, well, isn't there a song says, it's not my brother or my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. We need to examine our own lives and work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. It's not my job to judge you or to judge somebody else and to see whether this person or that person is walking with the Lord. We can only look at our own lives and the Lord looks at us to see whether we are doing what we should, that we're walking the way that he wants us to walk. I'm not your judge tonight, folks, and you're not my judge. You're not. I'm not here to sledgehammer anybody. I'm not here to make anyone feel bad. I don't want anyone walking out through that door and say, Pastor, I feel as if I've been kicked up and down. I feel as if I've been in my five rounds with Mike taste in the night. Listen, don't feel like that. Not because of me. It's because it's the Word of God that needs to search and examine our hearts and our lives. Because one day, as believers, and I'm warning you and I'm preparing you, as believers, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And so let's make the effort while we're here. It's our responsibility to examine our own individual lives regularly and to make the necessary preparations for the time when it comes when we will stand before the judge at the Bema seat. And I pray that God will bless his word and encourage your hearts. God willing, next week we're going to have a look at the married supper of the Lamb. The common wedding, the royal wedding. You all like weddings, ladies, don't you? Well, I'm going to talk about a royal wedding next week that will blow your mind. And we're going to bring our Bibles and we'll study it together and see what God's word has to say to us. Let's take a moment to pray. Bow your heads. Let's just pray. I'm going to ask the same thing to the people that are watching online. You bow your heads. You close your eyes. And just take a moment in the light of what we have heard tonight. Why don't you just take a moment for you to have a talk with the Lord? And ask Him to help you. We all need that help. None of us could survive in our own strength.
The Lord knows all about us individually. The Lord knows the time pressures, knows all about the family situations, knows all about the work pressures. He knows about it all. Just draw near. Just ask him for his help tonight. Maybe some folks that are watching tonight in your housebound can't get out. Maybe you feel guilty because you can't get out to church. Well, listen, thank God for the online service tonight. You're very much a part of the church, even if you're physically not here. Lord, I just pray as the shepherd here of this flock. I pray, Lord, for everyone that has listened on. I pray for the folks that are here in church that have made the effort to come out tonight to study your word. You know all, of, you know all about us. You know our lives. Just like the people that are watching online, wherever they may be watching on from whatever part of the world, Lord, you know what's going on in their lives. You know all about the pressures. You know all about the illnesses and the sicknesses. You know all, everything, you know, the family situations. Lord, your eyes run to and fro throughout this world. And you miss nothing. And we can hide nothing from you. And I just pray in the light of what we have read about and studied tonight. Lord, we don't want to stand before you embarrassed. We don't want to stand at the beamer with the beamer. Lord, we want to stand right before you. God, help us. I thank you, Lord, that I thank you that when it comes to the salvation issue, positionally we are right. But when it comes to our work and our service, oh Lord, I pray that you will just, while we've got breath in our bodies, that we can use our time wisely to serve you. God, help us tonight, we pray. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's stand and sing that lovely hymn, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart. Come on, let's stand and sing it unto the Lord.
And just as we come to the close of our broadcast tonight, we do pray for the folks that have watched on that you've been blessed and encouraged through the word. And God willing, we'll see you again on Sunday morning at 11.30. God bless you.